Okay, I've got the back glued on to the guitar and trimmed it to the to be flush with the sides. So now it's time to start working on the arm bevel. And I just roughed out with a pencil where that inner block is so that I know not to make the bevel any deeper than that. So I marked it on both the top and the side. So initially I'll use a plane to start taking off some of the wood. So here's the bevel starting to form. I want the bevel to be at a constant angle to the side. I don't want it waving up and down. So I've got this handy block that I made and I cut a 120 degree angle into it. Kind of chosen at random. I mean it could have been 110 or 130 and it would work the same. But I can run this block along the bevel as I'm working it and, and check to see where the angle is. So I'm kind of in the ballpark everywhere now. So what I'm going to do is take some sandpaper and stick it on here and then run the sandpaper back and forth on the block, on the bevel, to sand it all to a constant, a constant angle. When I get real close, I'll make pencil marks. And as soon as I see that all of the pencil marks have disappeared everywhere, I will know that I'm done with the sanding. There's my bevel. The next step is to route the binding channels. Obviously it's not going to hit here where I've got the bevel, but that's down the road. Okay, that first route was for the width of all of these purfling strips plus the binding. And now what I'm going to do is route a narrower but deeper channel that will just be wide enough for the binding. Okay, so I've got the binding and the purfling channel cut on the soundboard. So the next step is to extend the deepest part of this channel down the side along where the bevel is. And in order to do that, I'm going to use this Dremel router with a base on it that I made to match the angle of the bevel. So it's 60 degrees. And what I'm going to do is run this
along the side of the guitar with this bevel here resting right on the, the arm bevel. So then that'll be my guide for the, the router bit to cut the channel for the purfling line that will extend down the side of the guitar. So, don't know if it shows up, but you can see that there's a ledge that's been routed here. And that's what the, uh, the purfling line will sit in. Just like that. Okay, the last major step is to extend the purfling onto the, uh, the soundboard over the bevel. So I've made this template out of a piece of plywood scrap that matches the curve of the bevel and I moved it in 3 16 of an inch which is the width of this cutter plus the diameter of the of the uh, pattern follower and so now I'm going to route along there and that'll give me the channel for the purfling lines to extend through the bevel and any little sharp edges that I have, I'll just clean up with a chisel afterward, and then I'll be ready to start gluing everything in. got my channel cut for the binding and uh, for the purfling and I cut the channel that goes down along the side of the guitar body and bo the bottom of the bevel and I've cleaned everything up so I have nice fair curves at each end um, I've got my wood veneer purfling lines here that are going to go around the top of the guitar and then I've got my maple binding nice curly maple that will go along the outer edge of the top and then on the side ultimately it's going to look like this there will be the uh, the maple and then a black white black wood veneer purfling line running along the side of the guitar but for now while I glue the the top purflings and the binding in I'm not going to be able to get that black white black side line in instead I'm going to use these strips of Teflon as a kind of a placeholder and then I can go back later and pull out the Teflon because it doesn't stick to the glue that I use and I'll replace the Teflon with my, uh, my purfling strip for the side. So the first thing I have to do is get everything glued in, or get everything taped into place, and then I will proceed to glue it. One nice thing with the binding, since it doesn't go over the bevel area, I can cut this piece right now and it's a little easier to deal with it as a half up there and a little section down below the bevel to try to keep it all together as one piece. 
that's my binding and then I'm going to shove this Teflon strip in here and tape it all together. Well, I had this all taped up and then realized I had forgotten a very important step. Um, I'm going to be using super glue to hold everything in place, and super glue has a tendency to wick itself into everywhere because it's really thin, and one of the places it goes is up along the grain lines of the spruce. So, what I need to do before I can actually glue the bindings and purflings in place is to put a thin layer of lacquer along this channel to seal the end grain of the spruce so that the, the super glue doesn't penetrate and leave some unsightly dark marks. So I had to untape everything and paint this little bit of lacquer and now I can tape it all up again. <laughs> 